learn. Oh, excellent. All right. Well, thank you for being here today, everybody. And I'm excited to share a little bit of wisdom, I suppose, that I have in my few short years of um, coaching and uh, being an athletic director. Um, one of the biggest things I think that all of us face is just how do we keep sane in this world, even when it's non-COVID because it's busy. And so um, obviously I'll be talking about setting and keeping boundaries with coaches, parents, and athletes. So a um, little bit of background here. And I, I should be able, there we go. All right. So um, just a little bit about my background. I'm, I'm married to, uh, to my husband, Matt. Side note on my husband, he's an MOA and he's an MOA that um, due to the small numbers in MOAs is, uh, does a lot of our sports. And so sometimes I'll be on the sidelines um, with my team and he'll be actually officiating me, my teams or um, activities. And um, that's interesting in itself. Um, he tries not to, but with a shortage, sometimes he does. Um, I have Tyler. Um, he's he's 21. He is a uh, played football um, for the University of Mary, and um, getting ready to graduate next year. He's um, had an injury, knee injury, so he isn't playing um, college athletics anymore. But um, he's doing well. I have a son uh, that's 11, Remick, and uh, he uh, is just on fire for anything and everything that um, is a uh, uh, full contact. So he's great. Ezekiel is my grandson. My son, Tyler is married to a little gal named Trish. They met over at University of Mary. And I have a beautiful little grandbaby that's seven months. So he keeps me busy. Um, I get to see him this summer. Um, I've been at Grateful Central Catholic for 21 years. Uh, my dad was actually the principal that reopened our Catholic high school here. It closed back in 1974, and we reopened it in 2000. Um, I have been now for eight years the director of athletics and activities, and I've been a cheerleading coach here for those 21 years, and I've been coaching in general for 27 years. Enjoyed my time. I like watching my kids play sports, um, traveling, camping, and spending time with my, my four-legged babies. So I think the first thing, you know, when we're looking at trying to figure out, um, you know, what, how we want to keep our boundaries, we need to be able to define, you know, our leadership style, because that will play into a big role of what coaches, how coaches, you know, will operate, how you expect your department to operate. And that trickles down into, you know, what the parents see in the, in the sense of how they need to approach thing as a, things as a parent or as an athlete. Um, to have questions answered and um, so on and so forth. So I think it's a, it's a big uh, big thing for all of us to sit down. We need to identify, organize, and communicate uh, what type of leader um, you are. And and I will say that you know it comes in many sizes, shapes, different types. And I think over the years, um, my you know I know for myself the leader that I was as a as a first year athletic director is not the leader that I am today. Um, my leadership style, you know, for myself, I always tell my coaches that they're the CEO, but I own them. <laughs> and so I want them to operate their programs. Um, I, you know, uh, take great pride and I, they go through rigorous interviews and there's a lot of questions asked and, um, you know, the expectations are made very clear when they um, are interviewing for the job. And I really think that um, that helps you know, me find the type of coaches that work well with my leadership style and with our school and the culture that we have here. And being a Catholic school, that is extremely important. So I think that sometimes we operate a lot different, obviously, than public schools do. So um, we really have to identify that. Um, you know, good solid flow charts. You know, I, it's something real quick, easy visual for the parents, um, for the athletes, for the coaches. You know, how does our department flow? Um, you know, organizing. Um, and a big piece, I think, for us as, as athletic directors is organizing, you know, um, your AD life versus your family life. And as a uh, first year AD, um, and I can say probably my first year through fifth year, um, it really affected my uh, family life because it's a lot to balance. There's a lot to balance there. And you know, learning to draw those boundaries and um, be able to keep yourself sane and your family loved 
um, but also, you know, be the athletic director that your school and your culture and your athletes need you to be and the families need you to be. So, um, you know, really organize that, look at it. What are the times that are good for your family? Um, I can tell you that I send out a lot of different communications that say, you know what, this week, these are my office hours. These are the hours that I'll be taking cell phone calls, um, you know, that type of stuff. But on the weekends, this last weekend, um, my little guy went to play lacrosse in Kalispell. So we were out of town. Um, you know, I, I just wanted to sit and be mom. Not very often do we get to do that as ADs. And so it was fun to sit on the sidelines and just be my mom and cheer for my kid. Um, so during that time, I just told them that I'm out of office and I'm not reachable only for emergencies. I did have some buses on the road, um, but my coaches have been pretty good about that. And my parents, um, having gone through this process with them, they're really good about it. So um, another thing is that, um, you know, here in my high school, I'm obviously part of the administration team. There's four administrators here. I wear a lot of different hats. I'm not just the director of athletics. Um, I, I do a lot of discipline here too, when need be. And I today I'm the only administrator in the building. And so um, I've got my principal gone and on the road because um, she also is a principal superintendent combo for us. Um, but communicating with my administration, uh, when she first came in as a new principal, I'd been through two principals that it was pretty tough. It was really hard. A lot of the parents were able to, you know, um, sidestep around coaches, myself included, and go to the principal, you know, with stuff. And um, we love our principals, um, at least here um, in our organization. My principal is a wonderful person. Um, she's superintendent. She's very, very wonderful lady, very seasoned lady. Um, but, um, you know, she is, is entrusts me with athletics. You know, she, her understanding of how those things run is, um, is, uh, very basic. And so she's willing to, you know, back me up hundred percent and, um, you know, and she knows that I'll go to her when I need to with any, uh, questions or just general communication. So I think having a good open communication with your administration team as to what your leadership style is and what they can expect from you and what support you expect from them is huge. So um, I start with the coaches um, with setting boundaries. You know, funny enough, um, we kind of always tend to think that um, our parents are going to be the ones that are going to be really calling a lot um, and, um, you know, uh, showing up in your office at all hours and stuff like that, which, you know, I don't necessarily always mind. But, you know, like today, um, a communication went out and I just said, you know what, um, here's my, my communication for my, op my office hours, times and times that I'll be reachable today. Um, and it won't be this morning. <laughs> so um, with coaches, you know, I think a big piece with coaching coaches and setting the boundaries are what are my responsibilities versus a coach's responsibilities. And for every school, I think this looks different for every leadership style. I think this looks really different. Um, so having a good open communication with your coaches of, you know, these are my responsibilities. This is what you're going to expect from me. And this is what I expect from you. And these are the parameters we're going to operate within um, is, is really big in helping set those boundaries. I want to give my coaches freedom to make good decisions um, that are things that um, don't have a big, huge impact. And I, and I talk with them about, you know, getting into it, the insurances and, and the liabilities and understanding all of that, um, you know, the negligence and stuff like that of, of decisions that they can make. And so then, you know, just really educating them on on um, you know, potential problems that they could run into and, and getting them to really understand the full picture, um, especially your new coaches. You know, I'm in a small school, so a lot of times I have um, coaches that are brand new. I have a brand new head coach for football. He has been an assistant coach for quite a few times or quite a few years at different schools. Um, but those coaches take a lot of time and, um, and that's good. It's time that you know, I want to invest into them. Um, and, um, right now he's flourishing and doing very well. And so it's, it's, it's good. Um, having a very, uh, you know, strong philosophy, um, of what the, uh, athletic department in your school stands for, um, obviously for us, it's going to be our strong philosophy with Catholicism, you know, how does, um, how does our athletics program run and maintain our Catholic identity, morals, and values, um, and so having coaches understand that a lot of my coaches are not Catholic. Um, and so this is a big talking point, you know, with them, because that really does trickle down into what the parents see, 
And um, I've got a lot of parents that are extremely strong in our in their faith and expect um, coaches to um, operate a certain way with morals and values. And, um, you know, with my philosophy that will align right with, I try to align it with what um, our, our Catholic morals and values and philosophy should be. So um, expectations, we already talked about that, you know, just what are the expectations that I have for the coaches? Um, I tell my coaches, you know, here's my office hours. Um, some of them do teach, some of them don't. Um, so I have uh, quite a few off campus, uh, but they know that they can reach me during these set hours. Um, there's usually a Monday, a communication that goes out uh, each Monday that tells them this is what my week looks like. This is how you can reach me. Um, and um, I also hold uh, cell phone hours. Um, so those are hours that they can get a hold, me, hold of me via cell phone. Um, uh, if they can't make it in during office hours, um, we can do that. And we've done some Zoom meetings too during those times. Um, I have found that um, I had to implement a cell phone hours actually two years ago. Um, I had this one coach, God love him great person. I think he, um, he does struggle with a little bit of adult ADHD. <laughs> Dude, he's great. He's great. You know, but, um, you know, a 10 30 uh, at night phone call was just totally acceptable in his world. You know, he had something he had to tell me and it was important. And he talked to me now, you know, and, um, you know, I, I, uh, made the mistake of, uh, of, uh, answering that phone. Um, and letting him proceed after there was no emergency. You know, I, I tell them, you know, with emergencies, they are to call me at any hour. Um, if there's something going on with one of their athletes, if they're on the road traveling home, you know, that type of thing. But, um, you know, um, the cell phone hours has worked real well for my coaches that can't meet during the day. Uh, but really setting those boundaries of when will you take calls? I have some coaches that call as early as 530 in the morning. Um, and um, some days that works for me, some days it doesn't. But I find that that Monday morning communication with what my parameters are for the week for coaches um, is, is good because they do, I do need to be accessible to them, but I also need to um, be able to have a little bit of downtime too. So um, keeping boundaries with coaches, I have found that do not waver, stand firm. <laughs> Because, um, you know, I have, I have uh, coaches that are, um, have become, you know, somewhat friends of mine, you know, they, you know, their the kids are the same age or what have you, you know, type of thing. And, um, you know, having a really good uh, communication with them as to what hat you're wearing at that time uh, is big. And so uh, I think that, um, you know, redirecting conversations when they happen, you know, at the grocery store, a lot of them, they'll see you at the grocery store, they'll see you at shopping, they'll see you at dinner and coming over and, and, um, you know, and that's fine. Um, the biggest, uh, you know, another thing is that, you know, we're human, we can't remember everything. And, and I know that um, in the past, I've had coaches come over and you're out eating dinner, or whatever, and they kind of give you a 10 minute rundown of, you know, all this information. And, um, I really have programmed them to, you know, I love you to stop by and say hello. If you need to give me a brief little explanation of what you need from me, please go ahead. <laughs> but you need to follow it up with an email because I won't remember at that time and I want to make sure that I, you know, attend to your needs. Um, you know, be, be real with your coaches about your family time, um, you know, how important it is. And, um, you know, Catholic schools, I mean, that's one thing that is very important to all of us is our family time and time to um, be able to be a family unit um, is, is huge. So um, just be real with them, you know, and, and explain to them, you know, this is, this is really important to me that I have this type of time for my family. Um, you are important to me, but I, I need to be there for them. Um, be consistent, you know, with your office hours as much as possible and your cell phone hours so they know what to expect. Most of the time they can. Sometimes if I adjust it, it's just by a little bit. Um, and then I keep, you know, saying, remind them of your emergency protocols. You know, I never want a coach to not call me with an injury. Um, I need to know that in my school. Um, I also deal with all the injuries. Um, I am somewhat, if you will, the frontline um, athletic trainer. Um, I do have one that comes to games, but I'm the one that's here to um, tape and wrap for practices and to take care of those immediate injuries um, for practices. So... <clears throat> This next piece is um, interesting and I, and I don't know, maybe it's a small school thing. And if any of you have some uh, uh, light to share on this for me, it'd be interesting for me. 
Um, but we are in a small school system up here. Um, you know, our high school right now is about 100 kids. Um, my two uh, K-8s are sitting at about 250 a piece, I believe, right in there, 200, 250, somewhere in there, um, depending on what grade levels you count. But um, we're not very big. Um, and uh, parents here, you know, I, I think it's maybe true everywhere, you know, they pay for Catholic education and they like to have a lot to say about it. <laughs> so, you know, setting those boundaries with those parents can be a challenge. Um, you know, parent meetings, I'm sure most ADs do parent meetings. Um, you know, I, I tend to like to spend a lot of time on, you know, educating parents on how their voice is heard. Um, I think a lot of parent frustration comes out when they don't think that they're being heard um, either by the coach or the administration. And so, um, you know, we do talk a lot about um, how they can have their voices heard, which is, is good. Um, we do have, and I think most places do, an athletics uh, policy handbook. Um, I operate with actually two of them. We have one that's at the state level for Montana Catholic schools. Um, most of mine really just mirrors what they say, but we do tweak it just a bit to make it work for our school. And so, you know, going over that, hitting the highlights, I like to send out an email prior to it, um, just like we would for any meeting with, a, with um, our colleagues, you know, we'll send out an agenda and I do send out a copy of the athletics policy handbook um, and the athletics department philosophy, you know, and then I do send out a flow sheet of communication, what it looks like, how they communicate. Um, and uh, then when they come to the meeting, you know, they've already kind of had that in front of them. Some will, some will read it, some won't. Um, we do have our parents actually sign off on our athletics uh, policy handbook. And so um, I find that a lot of our, since I put that sign off protocol in there saying, you know what, you need to sign off that you understand what the expectations are um, from, you know, we expect from you and what you can expect from us. So um, in that meeting, you know, I will explain to them again, I think it's very important for them to understand what my role is, um, how I fit into the picture and, um, and how the coaches fit into the, to the picture and um, how they, you know, uh, communicate um, and how they teach their uh, young, or young adults um, that are athletes how to communicate and how to advocate for themselves. And I think that is a, is a big piece um, and it's all a teaching role, um, you know, for us that we're in where, you know, young parents that this is the first high school athlete that's come through or first, um, you know, junior high athlete that's come through, you know, um, how do we empower the parents to empower their children to be able to um, advocate uh, for them and uh, be able to have good conversations that are productive um, and to feel confident coming to us. Um, I, this last uh, basketball season, I had a, a, a newer family in and, um, you know, they would sit in the stands, you know, and be very upset and be very verbal about how they're upset with the way that the coach is coaching. And, and I could, you know, I would get bits and pieces. Other parents would, you know, kind of come to me and stuff. And, and so at one practice where I saw that they were, you know, picking up their kiddo and they were waiting outside for the kiddo, I, you know, I jumped out and, you know, told them, I said, but, you know, come on into my office, come on in and join me. And um, we had a really good conversation, kind of did a little bit of a relationship building with them. Um, and um, they just didn't feel comfortable. You know, they, they came from another school where they felt that there was a lot of, um, I guess, retribution for, for parents or kids that stood up against the coach and, and, and um, aired maybe a, a concern or a problem that they're having. And so just reassuring them that that's, you know, not what we're about, that we want to hear from our parents, um, you know, it went a long ways with them. So um, just being able to explain to your parents, you know, what that role was, they were not able to come to my meeting. And so I think they missed out on a lot. And, and I think that could have been circumvented through um, them having a good understanding. Um, chain of command, and then, um, you know, family and friends of athletes, you know, how to confront them. You know, um, most of them have been pretty good. I do have one dear friend of mine um, that, uh, you know, they've had multiple kids go through and uh, it's a good discussion that we kind of have every year you know, that no, you know, you're not going to have any special treatments or things are not going to work differently. And, um, you know, my office hours are my office hours, you know, type of thing. And, um, you know, they seem to do well. Um, they are friends. And so it is tough, but, um, 
you know, I think being in our role, obviously consistency on um, how we uh, handle things and how our kids are held accountable and coaches, you know, it, it, it's very important um, uh, for us in our livelihood. So um, keeping boundaries with parents, you know, I always giggle because, you know, I, I, I work the stands is what I call it. You know, my, admit my principal kind of chuckles and, um, you know, just those, you know, go out, sit with the parents for a few minutes, be real with them, um, you know, give them gentle reminders on things. If, if, um, you know, they start kind of complaining and saying, you know, gosh, I don't like how the coach is doing this or that and redirecting them and, and just, you know, giving them, you know, the, the courage sometimes even parents need it that, you know what, the coach would really love to hear from you. Please come talk to them, you know, um, Quarterly reminders, you know, I just send out reminders to them, unless if I have something real busy this, you know, this week that, you know, here's my, my cell phone hours, my office hours. Um, and, um, you know, if, and I, you know, just give scenarios sometimes for them, coach versus AD questions. Um, you know, what are things then, who do we go to if we have a question on this type of thing? So those reminders seem to work really well. Setting boundaries with students, um, you know, there's the obvious boundaries, you know, and then, and, and most of us take something that's very similar to, we call it safe and sacred up here. Um, but how do, this kind of goes a little bit beyond that. And, um, you know, there's our, our, our main boundaries, but these ones are, um, how do you, you know, establishing a professional rate, relationship with the kids. Um, you know, I, I, they, some of them laugh um, on my picture. I don't know if you guys noticed in my little bio at the beginning. You know, they, a lot of them I had, I heard one of them, uh, they didn't know I was back here at my office apparently, but um, one of them said one day, oh, that old battle axe Stevens. And I kind of chuckled because I'm like, oh, I kind of am sometimes. Some of them will call me Mama Stevens, you know, because, you know, I hold them accountable for who they are and, um, and what they stand for. And it's all this mentoring that we do with students, you know, but I think, with the students, one of the most important things is, is helping them learn to establish a professional relationship. They will have professional relationships the rest of their life. And so, um, you know, when they come in and say, you know, some of them that are friends with my son, um, Tyler, or um, know me outside of work, you know, hey, Jamie. Um, no, it's Mrs. Stevens. And I'm really happy to see you today. Um, we're at work, we're going to have a good professional discussion. What do you have today for me? You know, type of thing, just redirect, redirecting them and helping them grow in that and just having a good understanding with the kiddos. Um, you know, they also need you to show compassion and genuine concern. Um, so that goes into the boundaries piece. And I, I find that I, I enjoy spending a lot of time with, with um, my athletes, mentoring them and teaching them um, how to talk to their coaches, you know, some of them come in and they're, you know, they just come in and they melt down in my office and, and, um, and I, you know, talk them through, you know, how are you going to talk to your coach? What are your concerns? What are you afraid of? You know, um, oh, I'm so afraid that if I say something, I'm not going to get to play or they're going to be mad at me or, you know, stuff like that. And, um, you know, that goes back into that professional relationship building, you know, understanding that, and so, um, you know, I, I bring them in, I mentor them, I talk to them. Sometimes we have a role play discussion with it, you know, and, um, and then I just, after that, I say, you know what, you've got this, you know, I empower them to go on and go to your coach and have this good discussion um, and uh, have a good day, you know, type of thing. And so I do hold office hours for my students as well. Um, and uh, one of the big ones is that I, you know, I just have decided over the years, lunchtime is pretty big. You know, it's a free time for our kids that I'm um, here in the school. And so they know they can come and see me and make appointments with me during lunch hours and stuff. So sometimes I'll, you know, have to figure out before or after, you know, and tweak my schedule a little bit, but it is important for them. Um, and again, just to be real with them, you know, um, I, they also know that, you know, um, here's, here's my boundaries as, is your AD. And this is, you know, what you can expect from me and what I can expect from you. And, um, you know, um, I, I get you, I understand you. I hear you. I've been an athlete once, you know, and just to be real and to be human with them is, is huge and, um, goes a long ways with their growth and understanding, um, you know, how to build those professional relationships. So it's good. Um, and usually after every conversation that I have with my students, you know, I try to send a quick email because um, uh, the parents, it's very important to keep parents in the loop and the parents love to hear when their kids, 
are learning um, and um, and showing growth um, in in different areas. And so, you know, keeping those parents in the parents in the loop is very important um, in helping build those boundaries with students. And then uh, keeping the boundaries with athletes is just, you know, continue to mentor and refer on to the coach, continue to provide office hours and continue to build your professional relationship with them um, as somebody that, you know, they can call upon. And I have kids to this day that um, will call me, you know, if they're an athlete at a college somewhere, you know, Mrs. Stevens, I have this going on. What do I do? You know, what, what do I do? And so it, it's sometimes a lifelong thing, you know, um, you coach for a blip in your life, but you're a mentor for, for a, another, a whole other life for this athlete that you've helped. And so um, it's, it's really uh, makes you feel good when you have um, those, those kids in college and later on coming back to you and, and um, keeping in, in contact with you. This is a big one. And um, I didn't really realize uh, how important self-care is until um, I think I was about four years in um, as an athletic director and trying to be everything to everyone. And, um, it hit me and, um, I was, you know, kind of getting real tired. Um, I was actually, um, diagnosed with, um, uh, severe adrenal fatigue. Um, so I thought that was interesting. Didn't know that was really a thing, but couldn't figure out why I just, you know, was all out of sorts, couldn't sleep, you know, was tired all the time. Um, a lot of brain fog, that kind of stuff. But it was just really basically in a nutshell, learning to take care of yourself. And um, we have to make it in this industry um, a priority um, because if we don't take care of ourselves, then we've got a mess on our hands. Um, and um, I think just knowing that it's okay to do that and um, creating these boundaries, um, you know, before, um, you know, all of this, I didn't have office hours. I had parents that would stop in at all hours of the day. And, and, um, you know, you'd feel like you wouldn't get anything done all day. And, um, that was really stressful and hard. Um, so I think that really creating these boundaries, um, with your parents, with your coaches, um, will help us be better at what we do. Um, in return, when we're better at what we do, we have a, a better product, which is our coaches and our athletes. So I think that is, is, is extremely important. Um, I just would like to, you know, maybe, you know, questions and answers. If there's anybody that has some feedback, it would be great to hear your feedback, maybe on what you do and, and how you um, manage um, your boundaries. I got a question for you. All sure. For so I have this, I've had this internal fight with my uh, coaching staff. Like, I just don't want to sit here on my thumb for like an hour a day. And I can't, you know, the fires come and we get, have you found it productive? I guess I've been hesitant to post office hours because I can't control my own schedule necessarily all the time. You know what I mean? If I get whatever playoffs come up and Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, work for six months, but then they don't work for that month that, you know, and then I get, um, like, you know what, I, one person comes in and they need an hour, right? So then yeah. other people pop in and they're like, well, I stopped by, but the door's always closed. So it becomes a game of firsties. Yeah. It, office, yeah. right? It so does. I, I have, I've stayed away from that. And I'm just wondering if you, I don't know if that is even a thing where, where it, just for me, it hasn't worked. That's why I, I hear you, but I'm wondering if you, you understand what I'm saying. This is to the group, yeah. really. I have a master set times. Yep. You know, it is hard. Um, I have found that my coaches, um, you know, a lot of them do want the FaceTime um, with you in your office, you know, chatting and stuff. Um, I've seen a big shift after I, you know, kind of did my office hours and you're right. You know, I mean, I'm trying to fight to kind of get in for that. Um, but I bought, saw a little bit bigger shift in when I, cause I first didn't have like what I call cell phone hours. Um, and, uh, those are usually when I'm not at the school, obviously they can always call me during my, my regular schedule. Um, but the cell phone hours, I, you know, try to hold at night. I try to hold them, you know, before we start family time at home. And our goal for family time at home is six 30 at night. After that, I don't work any longer unless if I'm at an event, um, unless there's an emergency and stuff, but I have found that the, the cell phone hours have worked very well. 
Um, because uh, it seems like, you know, obviously you get a phone call, you're kind of one-on-one, -on -one, you know? Um, so there's been a pretty good shift. I would say that when I very first started and kind of went down this path of having, you know, office hours and kind of really trying to define what my boundaries were, um, it went from a lot of communication and you're right, Leo, it's really difficult because, you know, trying to get everything in and our schedules do change a lot. Um, but I found with the more of my weekly communication with my coaches of expectations, what's going on and, you know, that, um, just that piece in the loan, I've seen a big drop in it. I'm sure you probably do something like that as well. Um, you know, um, the, when I usually schedule my office hours, I, it's usually a time when I, um, have my busy work you know, stuff that I'm like when I'm projecting for next year or when I'm doing, you know, stuff like that, that I can stop real easy. Um, if it's something obviously like this or, or I have some, a, a time crunch that I'm into, you know, get out stuff or, you know, having some stuff that's real focus intensive, um, you know, it's not as easy to drop what you're doing. Um, I've, I've been fortunate with, um, you know, um, I don't have a backup. I don't have an assistant. I've got an administrative assistant that, that sits in the front office that does both my work and the principal's work um, when we have stuff. And I, very little of my stuff do I send that direction. But, um, you know, I, I, I've been able to free up some time a little bit here and there. And, and um, I usually... I, I would say I, I probably only have uh, a week, probably... I'll probably see about six coaches in my office per se on a consistent, like I know my during season, my wrestling coach, you know, every Tuesday, um, I know he's going to be in my office, um, you know, before practice. And that's just kind of a standing meeting that we have, um, uh, football. Um, he works, my head coach actually works here in the building. And so, um, you know, I know that on his free, um, during his free time, you know, I know I have him consistently every week at a certain time, but, but other than that, it is, it is hard. Um, so I don't know if that helps at all, Leo, but yeah, it, it is difficult to hold those hours. Yeah. I, I've gone to just for everyone. I, I actually went to an app. I just use Calendly and I just blocked out hours and it's all digital. Now I make coaches do their own. Oh, very nice. So they just tell you when they're going to want to meet with you. I have, I, if you use the, I'm sure there's other ones out there, but Calendly allows them to schedule you know, just like anything they saw, I just, my, my calendar is synced to it. So if I have a meeting with you or the zoom, um, then all of a sudden, uh, it can't be available. So I just have available hours. So I just use that. That's kind of where I've moved. I, I guess I have digital office hours now, meaning like they, they float. If that nice. Makes sense. That's very good. That, and that, um, that app is on, um, it, it syncs. You said with like your Google calendar and yep. So they Calendly, yeah, see, yeah, Calendly, actually, someone put me onto it in, during this pandemic, and I've kind of gone to it, and I've actually, interesting enough, what I found is that most people actually don't need to meet with me. They just want me to have office hours, have office hours, so they can tell me <laughs> what they think so, so, but they have nothing to say. So basically, <laughs> I would look into it. I actually don't like spending an, whatever a month on apps necessarily, but mm -hmm. it's like my, uh, digital administrative assistant you know what i mean meaning like hey if, if parents too if you want to schedule a meeting with this so it's on my email yeah. and they just click on it and oh if you that's great leo can you put the leo can you put the app in the chat uh yeah i can do that don't that would be tech that would mean i'm technologically sound so hold on i'll, I'll <laughs> <pick that. laughs> no that would be wonderful i would love to see that that would uh find my great I, uh, I don't have I don't have stock in the company, so I'm sure there's other companies out there, but that's the one that that seemed to work that people like. Excellent, good, good. Eric, do you have any feedback? Anything that um, <coughs> that you do or see or? All right, um, you know, I, I think I really did like you know how organized and you know things on on task and keeping people on task um you know i i think that you know having those hours are important but a lot of times as an ad you know you're really a 24 7 job mm -hmm. and so it, it's 
you know, it, it's important to also maintain the hierarchy. Right. And getting, you know, getting the, getting it from the top all the way down, but getting it not only for the kids and the parents, but also for the, the, the people above you to understand that we have to, um, you know, we, we have to, to, to hold that boundary. Yeah. Yeah. It, you know, it's, it's really hard to do. And I, and I think for any new AD, it's going to be really, really hard to do because your learning is a huge curve, I think. Um, and I, I think uh, my uh, abilities to shift in what I was doing and my comfort level of not feeling like I have to be everything to everyone 24 hours a day. Um, it, it, about five years in, I started figuring it out, you know, and uh, so it was really difficult up until that time. And, and I'm a control enthusiast. <laughs> and so I really, you know, I really like to make sure that I know exactly what's going on at all times. You know, I, my coaches are amazing. I'm very blessed. You know, I'm not going to go into a practice and tell them, you know, what to do and how to do it. But um, they know that, you know, I expect um, full communications, <clears throat> you know, um, after practices, you know, if there's anybody that was injured during practice, you know, I expect an immediate call, you know, or a text by an assistant coach or, you know, because the head coach is probably, you know, busy at that time, but I expected a communication um, just so I'm aware of it. Um, if it's something like a sprained ankle, you know, something like that, then obviously towards the end of practice, but if there's any type of concussion or, you know, any, anything like that, um, you know, a, a quicker communication, but, um, you know, I found out that my coaches, you know, they, they've been really good about, you know, in the emergency, you know, situations getting a hold of me quickly and, and knowing that that's outside of, you know, just the regular boundaries. Excuse me. Well, Jamie, I thank you for presenting. Appreciate it. It's always good to trigger different thought processes. Um, I actually have to go because I just got a text saying we have a positive COVID. Uh, so I need to go. Oh, I need God to bless answer. you. <laughs> All to, right. Well, thank you so much. You guys can keep talking, but I appreciate your time. And thank good you, to see Anthony and Vince and everybody else on the on the call. But yes, I have that. I'm still living it as we all are, right? So that when you get that text, I got to jump on that. Yeah. Yep. All right. Because I probably have more work. My office hours are now <laughs> screwed up because I only have to <laughs> change up for something different right now. Hold another direction. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. All right. Excellent. I'll see you guys later. Yeah. Take care, Leo. Mm -hmm. I got to go hit the traffic myself. So all right. I'm Excellent. Driving to the office. So nice meeting you. Thank you for everything. And, uh, Thank you. Good luck on the way. Thank you. Yep. I'll, I'll see you later, Vincent and Christina. Have a good one, you guys. Mm -hmm. Good deal. Anybody else have any other questions or comments? Jamie, could you share go? any documents that you have? I'll just make sure I'm not. Okay, I'm not muted. Can you share yeah. any documents or slides that you present um, to parents or coaches or anything like that, just from an organization standpoint? Sure. Yep. Um, Anthony, um, what is your um, email? Oh, I can give you my email. Let's I'll see. Put it right here for you. Excellent. I can spell my name. I'm not very good at this whole chat thing, so I'm so. Um, can I? Can you? Uh, did I get your chat? There it is. Okay. Thank you. Excellent. Yes, I'm more than happy to share any of that. Um, what, what grade levels do you have, Anthony? Uh, I have nine through 12. Nine through 12, very good. Where are you at? Uh, Sioux City, Iowa. Oh, very good, excellent, good. Yeah, so I, I have not done a very good job of communicating these aspects to my coaches or parents. Um, I've probably actually done a very poor job because if they, I'm like, what are you, how'd you get my phone number, first of all? <laughs> right? Like on a weekend and I know. I'm, and, you know, and, and unfortunately, I tell everyone on my staff, like, don't respond to them. Like, there's got to be some kind of boundary. But, it, I, you know, I, of course, I'm dumb. So I should have laid well, this out. And you know? it's, you know, and it's hard. How many years have you been doing? Uh, have you been the AD? Uh, my third year here. Third year. Well, and, and I think that, you know, what's really tough, Anthony, is I think that at the beginning, 
um, because you're so new in, in learning that whole job and your responsibility. And I was always afraid that something, I wasn't going to do something and it was going to cause a problem. And, you know, the trickle down effect is huge, you know? And, um, I think that, you know, you have to get to that comfort zone. And so, you know, sometimes up front, always being in the loop is not necessarily a bad thing, but you know, now that you probably feel more comfortable, <laughs> It's a life changing. I mean, it's life changing, people. <laughs> so you're telling me my move was um, if I get that 10 30 at night phone call and I wake up early and I have young kids, I will call them back at 5 30 in the morning when my alarm goes off. And I'm like, hey, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> that nice little <laughs> passive aggressive. Yeah, are that. you ready to talk now? <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, but uh, yeah, it's, 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 you know, and I just found it's just all that communication piece. And I, you know, I do um, fifth grade through 12th grade athletics. I have three schools that I'm actually the AD for. And yeah. um, my middle school is rough because, you know, they're not, I mean, I thought high school was rough, but man, if you do any middle school work, ew, because they're not, you know, they can't get themselves to practices. They can't, you know, they can't pack their bag by themselves yet. You know, I mean, just stuff like that. You know, so those middle school parents are, they're, that's a rough one. I still... You know, that's just a whole different thing. I have, you know, my expectations get real tight when they get into high school because now they've known what the process is for uh, old battle axe Stevens, they call me, but no, <laughs> but yes. So um, no, it'll keep getting better, Anthony. Yeah. Tighten those up. I'll get you what, um, I'll send you what I've got um, and some of the stuff that I use. So I recently read something from another AD and I can't remember about office hours, which I've always just had my door open and I don't know if anyone else saw this, but. You know, they're basically like, I don't tell people anymore, whatever I can do whenever stop on by because people do just stop on by and they just want to talk. And I'm like, yep. I, I don't have time for this. Or three people will be in my office having a conversation while I'm trying to work. So I right. finally got better just at closing my door and just hundred percent in my, I, I loved it during, during my meeting, there's this big window. Cause I also, I, I manage the weight room and stuff. And so, you know, of course, during my meeting, my little sweet cherubs, or blowing blow fishes. <laughs> I, I still haven't gotten them figured out enough yet, apparently. <laughs> but you're right. You know, the door open piece, I tell you, it's, you know, I like to have my door open, you know, for people. I mean, from the bottom of my heart, I do, but man, you don't get anything done. No. You know? So yeah, it is, it's, it is important to have some, I put my do not disturb sign out. And because I have coaches and kids that they just, I mean, they just come right through the door, you know, and I'm in the middle of uh, stuff, you know, so right now there's a big red X on my door that says, do not enter. <laughs> well, and I feel like if I have my door closed and Vincent, I'm sorry if I'm taking all this time from you, um, yeah. they'll still come in. So if right. it's, they'll yeah. still open the door and say, do you have time? I'm like, <laughs> no. <laughs> come in. Yeah. <laughs> so. Oh, Lord. Vincent, but, what do you have? Do you have anything? Oh, I can't hear you. I think you're on mute. Yeah, you might be on, are you on mute. Oh, I don't know why we can't hear you. Send me, I can, I can read it through chat though, if you want to send me a little chat. <clears throat> so yeah, it's, it's, it's such a fine line to be accessible and to be helpful and to, um, you know, just be open to everyone. But at the same time, like, holy smokes, we got a lot to work. Like yeah. here, you know, I was just talking about it, you know, with a parent because we have mass on Tuesdays at two o'clock oh. and I hardly ever make it. And I'm like, I'd love to be there. I said, but we have every, every, we have something at four o'clock every day. And my mind is racing during that entire time that I can't just sit still, you know? So it's, uh, you know, oh, it's, it oh. is hard. Yep. Yep. It is. It is so hard because, uh, yeah, I mean, same, you know, I, it, it's terrible when you find um, that <clears throat> mass hour is where you get a lot of work done, you know, right. and that's, you know, and, and you feel like, gosh, I really should be there at mass being the good, you know, um, you know, seeing them. So the students see you, you know, right. um, engaging and stuff with school and being a good role model, but we had Marion day mass today at 830 and I had 16 text messages by the time I got out of there. It's. It's not good. You know, another thing that I. Including I talk from parents to, that were in the mass. 
Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> From the parents in the mask. Yeah. Aren't they cute? Yeah. <laughs> They're just adorable people, oh, aren't yeah. they? <laughs> That's a good way to put it. I love it. Well, let's see. It looks like Vince, oh. I, I read your stuff. Um, let's see. Oh, you were just a little bit late. That's okay. Um, I do believe um that um Vince, that they will um I'll send a, the presentation and stuff to you. Um if you have any questions, and I'm, you know, I, I will do anything for my AD counterparts, but um, if you are new and, and you guys, either one of you have questions or we just want to bounce up stuff off, you know, each other, um, you know, I can certainly on my email, I'll have my, <laughs> I'll have my cell phone number <laughs> <laughs> on there, <laughs> but I never mind talking to my other ADs. I need it. <laughs> uh, I got to go. I've got a coach knocking on my door right now. So thank Excellent. you so much. Thank you, Jamie. Yes. That was awesome. Not a problem. Have a good, have a good one. Take care. Thanks, take care. Bye, Vincent. Good seeing you again. What do you, what do you? Good deal. Um, I, let's see. Molly, um, I don't know if Molly has any questions. If not, Good deal. Um, Vince, did you, um, I'm just going to double check Vince to make sure you have your email down here for me. Let's see. Yes, you do. I see it. I'll go ahead and write those down. Excellent. And then um, what I'll do real quick is I'm going to just type in here real fast my here is my email address uh, for your for you guys and then oops, we'll all laugh. Here's my Um, cell phone number two. Um, like I said, I don't, I never mind talking to my AD cohort. So <clears throat> anyways, um, good. Yes, Vince, it, I'm glad your first year AD. That's, that's rough. Keep going. It's a great job. It's overwhelming the first year, but, um, you're in one of the best jobs in the whole wide world. So, um, I truly believe that. So yeah, if you need any questions, um, I know myself and everybody else that, um, at uh, CNAA will be more than happy to help you out. So yeah, please let us know. So um, if you guys have any questions, um, I, I am available today um, uh, until probably about 11 o'clock, um, but I'm more than happy to take um, calls or emails um, and I should be able to get back to you pretty quick this morning. Um, emails as far as um, getting you guys uh, like the material that I use, that one might take just a little bit longer. Um, for me to compile all that <clears throat> but um anyways it's a pleasure um thank you